Hello. Hope everyone enjoyed uh, that fantastic keynote uh, that we just had. Um, it's the same format as yesterday, so we've got one more talk today before the coffee break, and then a couple, uh, three more talks before lunch. Uh, today, I have the great pleasure of introducing uh, Czech. She's currently a data scientist and organizing several uh, meetups across the capital. Czech, take it away. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for uh, being here. I, you know, I, I'm sure if you come to this talk, then you uh, already have some kind of care about the diversity in um, the Python community. And um, as, uh, yeah, I'm Chuck. Uh, I this is my handle. You can uh, find me on um, GitHub or Twitter, so we, we can have a chat. But yeah. Um, as I am a co-organizer of uh, several meetups in London, um, including a, 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 a meetup called AI Club for Gender Minorities. So uh, uh, I have a lot of concern about the gender minorities um, in the community. And also I try uh, myself, I try to uh, dive into the open source contribution scene, but I, I just started at the beginning of my journey. I started to create it, my own um, my own library, which I need a logo, so please, if you're interested, let me know and help me out. Um, so enough about me. Um, yeah, I want to talk about um, the mainly gender diversity in the, uh, in the Python community. And uh, one thing that caught my attention was that I found this uh, blog post um, months ago online, and I believe this is a blog post uh, which is uh, already there for a while. Uh, I, I saw the blog, it was updated the last year, so um, I hope the information that it mentioned is uh, still valid till today. So, um, yeah, the, in the blog post it mentioned some problems that we have compared to the our community, which, um, because according to the survey done by um, Stack Overflow, um, the users of Python is actually six times more compared to R. But uh, if you look at the number of members in the Pi Ladies and Our Ladies community, there's only 1.25 uh, more members in the Pi Lady than Our Ladies. So you can see that there is like an imbalance here. Why there's like a lot more Python users? Um, uh, or like uh, yeah, people use Python, but uh, the Kind of if if the you know the membership of Pi Ladies the indicator of how many women in the um, in the Python community then that's like totally a, a imbalance there, and also uh, according to the uh, information from the blog is I think it's uh, some statistic that uh, it has done like uh, the link was in the previous slide so uh, you can click on it and have a more detailed look, but uh, it mentioned that uh, for the R community there's like four times more female contributors um, than Python. So yeah, as I mentioned, I am trying to get into open source contribution. Uh, I think um, obviously, like if, if you go to a lot of conference, you can see that a lot of the maintainer or key contributor of open source libraries um, in Python is mainly male. Um, so I think there is uh, there is a very understandable uh, imbalance there, which could be a problem. I also know that there uh, there's some like mentorship that's like start going on like. Uh, so um, I would mention at the end, maybe there's something that we could do about it. Um, also, if we look at the network of the, uh, of the female um, you know, uh, in the community, the Our Ladies, they have uh, 120 chapters in 40 countries, but uh, Pi Ladies only 45 chapters, active ch chapters in um, 19 countries. So it seems like um, the, even for just like uh, having meetup locally, there's, um, there's more um, people that are active uh, in our community than in Python community. So um, in, the, in that post, uh, it also mentioned that uh, there's uh, actually um, a potential reason why there's more um, uh, in proportion, there's more female R users than in the uh, female Python users. Uh, it mentioned that uh, in the, in the um, ac academically, um, there's like 44% uh, uh, of like of the graduate of a statistic principle uh, discipline is like is women, and it's significantly greater than um, the students graduate from uh, computer science. Uh, you can see there's like an imbalance in uh, computer science um, discipline in in universities. 
And uh, since a lot of the data scientists who have uh, a, a background in math, statistics, or science, or social science, even uh, e economy, uh, economics, they, they are users because um, for them, when they they use our as a statistic tool to you know help them in their academic research. So um, so it seems like this is like a, 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 a very a natural choice for them. But for Python, because uh, Python is a very, it's, it's a, actually it's a good thing. It's a more general language. It's not just used for statistics. And nowadays, I, I know it's like more popular in data science and machine learning. But um, Python is not limited to that. It could do a lot of amazing things. So <clears throat> that's why it's, uh, it's more popular in the data science um, uh, study and uh, sorry, uh, computer science study. And um, of course, it's also um, the students they're using um, C kind of a C plus plus as well, so it kind of um, integrated very well with Python, so that's why for them it's like more like a popular choice. So if they graduated from the computer science and then they decided to move their career into um, data, uh, from computer science to data science, then they would probably use Python in the job. <clears throat> so in that uh, blog post is also mentioned that there is like a Jupyter notebook that do some uh, statistic, statistical study about the um, the, the leadership group in PyData, uh, which is very interesting, because actually I see this uh, Jupyter Notebook before I found the blog post, uh, it also caught my attention. And then this is the result, so there's like Jupyter Notebook and do they, um, the link is also there, you can check like what methodology they use, but that's not uh, my um, focus here. But you can see, <laughs> um, this, is the, this is the graph, and then you can see like the lower it is, the more, uh, the more equal it is, the higher it is, there's like more bias. So um, you can see that there are some projects that is very popular, but um, they're not um, very diverse. Uh, the, the best ones are, you know, you can see like our open size, uh, our, yeah, our open size, which is like uh, also our. So you can see, um, yeah, open general is just like more for, you know, social science. So um, that's an imbalance there. And uh, also, it, uh, in the Jupyter Notebook, it also mentioned that uh, the reason for, like, there's two types of bias. Um, there's active bias uh, and uh, a passive, uh, you know, active diversity and uh, passive diversity problems. So for active problem, what does it mean? It's like uh, the community is like, there's some forces in the communities actively preventing the um, gender diversity to, um, you know, to grow. Like, for example, there's like toxic members or there's like toxic, um, you know, um, group that they, they prevent it happen. Uh, the passive one is like uh, the community is is not against being diverse. It's just uh, the nature of the community is uh, is not very uh, balanced. And then if nothing is, is done, then it's just going to be that way. So I do believe that we don't have that much uh, active uh, active uh, diversity problem. I hope. Uh, although, like, there's tiny little, you know, some occasionally there will be people voicing out saying, like, they don't agree with my point of view. But um, I think, uh, so far my experience, I think the ma major problem will be the um, passive diversity problems. So uh, I, that's why I try to do something uh, of myself, because the, the information that I gave you previously is second-hand information. I found it online. So I want to do some first-hand um, uh, research, you can call them, or studies, <laughs> which is like, an, it's not really a research because I just do s something like um, counting the, con the, the speakers at the conference that I attended last year. So uh, if you have been to conference, even like this event today, like if you, for example, there's a coffee break and then you go to the, the, to the toilet and then you can see that there's a queue of, uh, for the male toilet outside, but there's like a, there's, as a female, I just walk into the toilet, which is very convenient for me. But um, I think that also show that there is like an imbalance for the uh, conference attendee. Uh, but like uh, I, well, I, I kind of, I am involved in the EuroPython um, programming uh, work group right now, but I, uh, I don't have enough um, data to, for all the conferences, like uh, how, like the statistic of the t attendee, like uh, the gender and stuff. So I, what I do is like a more obvious way because uh, all the talks are recorded, 
Hi. <laughs> um, so uh, I, what I do is I go through all the videos of, of some conferences that I went last year, and I try to determine the gender of the speaker. Obviously, like this is uh, a lot of assumption that uh, that has been made because um, I can't really go to you know email and ask the speaker, oh, do you identify yourself as a male or female? I just make some assumption according maybe when the chair introduced the speaker that they would use a pronoun for for the speaker, and then I would use that as an indicator. Uh, so uh, yeah, so disclaimer is not. 100% accurate, but uh, of course there's also other things. For example, the speaker doesn't want it to be recorded or something. But um, let's, uh, But in general, we can use it as an indicator. Um, so this is the result. So you can see that um, Danielle is here today. <laughs> so it's like he must be very happy that actually PyCon UK is doing very well in um, in the gender diversity. Um, but uh, for the other conferences, like unfortunately, there's like 75% uh, of the speakers are actually male. So um, it's uh, it's very important. Like considering you know, the population, of course, there's like half male, half like maybe al almost half male, half female. Of course, there's other people who identify their uh, non-binary. But um, but yeah, this is showing that there's an imbalance in the speaker. So um, uh, why? Uh, uh, we I will talk about at the end. But before, uh, I would like to talk about their, uh, the diversity problem in theater because I am a, a very uh, passionate theater goer. I go to theater maybe once or twice per week. Uh, so especially in London, there's a lot of theater to go. So um, I noticed that there's also a diversity problem in theater, a different type of diversity, but we can get some insight from their problem. Maybe we can have a look at our community and there's like something that they did that we could uh, try to do as well. So I found this article um, on uh, the stage, which is like also a newsletter um, for, for theater. And um, they, in that article, they mentioned that um, uh, to address the problem of diversity, there's uh, actually different layers of addressing it. For example, uh, it mentioned that um, uh, for some, some shows, there's actually an imbalance of the, of the, of the cast. They could have... Uh, a, a story that uh, is not very um, specific in race, but they could have like a full cast made up of white actors, so um, which is a, a big no-no. <laughs> um, so also in the in the audience, there's also a problem because um, uh, now in London you can see it's a very diverse city, and then we have uh, you know a band population is now 44, which means a black uh, Asian. Um, uh, I think it's a Middle East, um, so it's like uh, uh, eth ethnic minorities, but it's not minority right now in London because it's like 44% of the people. So, but uh, in the theater, if you uh, like a theater goer like me, you can see that still uh, there's like a, a, a lot of the audience, they're actually um, a middle class, you know, uh, maybe um, white people, so uh, it's not very balanced. Um, also, there's uh, it mentioned that there's like you have the the stage, there's like the actors, you have the audience, but also there's like decision makers, influencers. They are the artistic director of the theater. They are the people who made the decision that like oh like what show is going to be next, and then what production they got to be doing. So um, they are very key players as well. But there's also an imbalance because there's not many um, uh, ethnic minority. Um, uh, yeah, uh, artistic directors in the London theatres. Uh, so there's the chicken and egg situation for theatres because uh, if they want to draw more people to see a show that is more for the minorities, then um, it's because you have a show that's like more interested, like like this show, uh, a fella, which is uh, very attractive to. Okay, very attractive to um, Nigerians because um, it's a music. Uh, it's a musical based uh, based on the story of this Nigerian singer. So it's like a lot of the Nigerian uh, cab, mini cab drivers. They're obviously not the like a frequent uh, theatre goer, but they they went to see the show again and again. They loved it. But the problem is, um, if you have this kind of show for the um, minority people, then you then it's a risk because they they are not sure that they may lose the, the uh, or like the traditional theater go uh, audiences so um, that's the chicken and egg question uh, problem there like should they, should they make a risk and change or if, even if they change maybe still not attracting the right uh, audience so um, that could be the, the problem um, so there's another article which is uh, this one the link is also there I will share the slides um, so 
what the theater, um, the community is doing is like they are trying to make a change, which maybe we could learn from them because uh, what they are doing is like they are trying to maybe for the gatekeepers, uh, the people that I said it's like very influential, the, the artistic director. They're trying to introduce some people um, that's uh, non-white <laughs> to have an ethnic diversity to be um, you know um, working as a, a artistic director. For example, these theatres in London, Bush, South Bank Centre, Young Vegan, they they're starting to have um, diversity in the people who are making decisions. So hopefully this scene will change. Um, also, some theaters, they're trying to uh, in, like be more inclusive and have accessibility. For example, they make sure that some tickets are cheap enough for people that's not middle class. They can, you know, they can still buy the ticket to uh, enjoy the theater. And also um, they have accessibility measures to help people. For example, now, now like if you go to theater, you see some shows, it's labeled as uh, British Sign Language or you know, audio describes for people who may be sight or hearing impaired. Um, also, it now uh, I think it's more popular for cinema, but not that much for theater. It's like they have relaxed performances, which for parents, maybe if they want to bring the kids um, to, let's say, the cinema, then uh, you know they will be showing this mainly for families. So uh, they could, you know, if the baby needs to have the nappy change or feed the baby, they could go in and out freely. Uh, people will understand; they don't think it's like too dis disturbing and things like that. So um, there's a lot of measures to do, to, to um, try to make it more better for everyone. So stepping forward, so what we can do about our community. So uh, this is going back to the first um, block that I talked about. Um, it's uh, also mentioned that in recent years, PyCon is making some uh, changes and helping to uh, be more uh, diverse. And then actually it's related to the, um, the theater measures that I mentioned before. For example, like uh, they outreach to women to to be the speaker and mentor them to be if they're first time speaker, maybe they need mentorship and they will provide that, which uh, is equivalent to having like more shows that is you know for for the for the minority audience. They need to find more female speakers so they attract more female um, to attend the, the conference to to attend the talk because they feel that oh it could be more related to me because speaker is also uh, female. Um, also, it provided a diversity scholarship, which is like the cheap tickets they uh, offer. You know, maybe women that you know they they uh, haven't been working for a while because of different reasons. If they start to want to go back to work, maybe they can't afford really expensive ticket. So that would really help them. Or for uh, graduates, the students that they also they can't afford, then that would really help them. So you can see that uh, things are changing. It's going better and better with this number. So um, it seems things are changing and it's working. Also, uh, for, for Pi uh, Data side, uh, non-focus, you know, the, um, uh, is also having a DISC community uh, co committee. I also get emails from them quite often. And I think it's uh, also good to have uh, a network of women trying to make changes and also over diversity scholarship similar. Uh, Jungle Girl is uh, amazing. <laughs> it's very powerful because uh, like all, almost all conference that I went, there would be like uh, similar Jungle Girl workshops uh, for people, uh, mainly for uh, we, uh, women that, you know, they, they are beginners, they want to start using Python. So that would be a, like a, a first step that they could, you know, have the whole day. They would, they would, they would mentors there to help them, you know, uh, to start coding. So, and, and the tutorial is super powerful as well. It was trans translated to 12 languages and it's growing very quickly. So it seems like if we want to do something, it, seem, it could be done. Uh, so my, this is my opinion, um, uh, my humble opinion. So it may not be correct, but I just want to flow something out so we can have a discussion. So uh, I think that for conferences, because uh, I go to a lot of conferences and I'm starting to help out in a lot of conferences as well, I think that childcare is very important. Uh, I know that, like for example, PyCon UK and PyData London, they are having a, a cash for, for families to bring their babies there. They can leave the baby there safely. Um, it's really helpful, even though like it may not be a lot of people using right now, but I think we what we can do is like we can encourage people to use it. So conferences, they, they can see it's working, so they would keep on providing it. Also, there's other accessibility arrangement. Last year, I go to PyCon UK, and I was so surprised that there's like a, a live, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but like, yeah, uh, captioning, yeah, live captioning that is 
you know, helping, you know, people with maybe hearing impaired, they can still see what the speaker was talking is, is an effort that I, of course, I don't know how many people are using, but it's the very nice gesture showing that we care and then um, people, you know, we encourage people, all kind of people that could come to the conference. So um, also a var variety of topics. Uh, I think that uh, also, I also <laughs> mentioned PyCon UK because they're, they're doing very well, so it's the example. So uh, I attend the, the conference and I think that the main difference is because there's a variety of topics. Um, of course, different conference, they have different, you know, focus on what their audience are interested in. But if you want to have a diverse of audience, then you should have a diverse of topics. So maybe more than in this, in, in industry topic like uh, you know pi data for data science, then maybe we could also talk a little bit more beyond that, maybe education and other other things. Um, also, uh, I mentioned Jungle Girl Workshop. It's amazing. It's doing very well. But that's uh, this. We can do more than that. We could provide workshop that's not just doing you know using Jungle. Maybe we could provide like a beginners workshop for data science or for other topics that you know, uh, also very easy for people to start learning, learn to use Python. And also maybe not limited to girls, maybe we should diverse it to, you know, um, maybe for, um, for other gender minorities as well. Or even like it's a beginner's workshop, maybe we should think about uh, a more advanced workshop for um, gender minorities because uh, we, we believe that it's not just, you know, um, it kind of, make people think that oh, all the gender minorities, they're beginners, but I believe it's not. So maybe we could have other workshops as well. Um, also, uh, not just for the conference, we need to also encourage the diversity in the community. Um, so uh, for example, maybe we need more female in the leadership and contributors. Uh, as mentioned before, there's not enough uh, female open, like, uh, contributors uh, in the Python community. So I know that, uh, I, I, I didn't show it here, but I know that uh, you know, some uh, C Python core developers, they, uh, they have some, they, uh, you know, they provide mentorship for uh, um, gender minorities. Um, and then I think it's a very nice gesture and I really appreciate that. And also, um, uh, yeah, uh, also because of the academic fail, uh, we see that most people who are like the, our users, they came from maybe a, a scientific background. Uh, so in their academic work, they use R. So maybe we should also promote them to have, an, have a look. Oh, there's actually like a better tool there. It's Python is very popular in the industry and maybe you could consider using Python as well. So maybe that's another way of having more uh, diverse users in the Python community. So that's, um, oh, yep, that's, that's um, all I want to talk about. And um, of course, there's more and more that we should uh, discuss. It's just, you know, a, sh a short talk and we don't have uh, a whole day to discuss things. But I created a survey that uh, if you want to, you can um, give me some feedback. Then maybe in the future, I can include that in, in more discussions. So um, yeah, please feel free to take a picture or, uh, or mark, uh, knock down the, the link. And um, that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. And um, I really appreciate that you care. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we've got about three minutes for questions, I'd say. Always the opposite corner. <laughs> Thank you for the talk, and thank you especially for bringing the numbers to back up the, the questions. Uh, something I've always wondered is, in the Python community, we're very often looking at gender diversity. Should we be looking at other axes of diversity um, now, soon? Are we, are we looking at the right thing? Is gender diversity where we should put so much attention? Yeah, that's 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 a very good question, actually. Um, uh, yeah, of course, there's like more diversity that we have to care about. Uh, I think it's not. I, I totally agree that it's not limited to gender diversity. It's just that because I am, uh, you know, I'm running the meetup group and uh, I have a lot of uh, women in Python that uh, I have connection with. That's why uh, today my main focus is that. But of course, we have to diverse. Like for example, we if we want to like have more diversity of the like. Um, Let's say go to PyCon Africa. You can, you know, make the maybe the African community aware of Python as well. Uh, you could also, as I mentioned, accessibility. Uh, the, 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 you know, um, accessibility is also for everybody. It's not just gender diversity. 
So I think the concept is the same. Uh, the diversity is like caring and want to include more people and how to get them in and introduce this uh, Python community to them. To, so I think it's, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, we can use the similar attitude towards the other diversities as well. So. Any other? Thank you very much for the talk. Um, um, so I'm wondering, are you going to carry on the data collection and what are some interesting questions that you might want to answer next? Uh, so certainly as a hiring manager, <laughs> those numbers do prove out in what I see anecdotally, just scrolling through lists, same, 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 same. And the interesting thing you point about the split between data science and uh, it's and to try and find what I call a normal Python engineer for infrastructure, that kind of thing. That's a really interesting point. That'd be cool to investigate further. So the question is, uh, what other uh, data points are you hoping to gather? And are you going to keep gathering uh, points over the rest of the conferences that you attend this year and next year? Yeah, I tend to, of course, I tend to gather more information. But I think at the same time, uh, if I want to carry out more kind of statistical study, of course, I need more resources. Uh, but there's actually an endless question that I could ask. Uh, for example, even the question that I've asked, since like, you know, maybe I did the same thing next year for this year's conference, maybe things already, is already changing. So I think um, we have to always be, you know, on, you know, really, um, you know, on our lookout to see if things are improving and maybe ask more other questions. For example, uh, how many, uh, you know, uh, women are using Python mainly in their work or something. We can ask more questions as well. So that's a very good question. And I think um, I would always, you know, this will be something that I'm always concerned about and I always want to know, you know, do more study and know more about and keep an eye on it. So, yeah. Probably the last question from Daniele. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Um, as a conference organizer, uh, we're always desperate to have more uh, diverse speakers. We're always delighted when there's a, a, women's, a woman speaker, especially one whose name we don't recognize, who's, who's, who's new to us. And it's always great to see a woman take a place, for example, on a technical board or in a leadership role. And that's really nice. But these are kind of outliers. And um, what's less visible is the vast number of people who are doing this in their daily jobs and that actually makes much more difference to people I think than their appearance at a conference or being on a, uh, a core team. And the, the figures for diversity and, and the number of women, especially the number of women in senior positions in, in the industry, in, 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 in employment, how, how are we going to tackle that? Because that um, seems to be a much harder and much more fundamental question than, for example, providing childcare at a conference, and I, I have no idea what we do about that. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, that's a very, very good point. I think, um, yeah, because in the conference, it's more easier to have an inference because like, you can have other measures to encourage women or provide things that they need for them at the conference. But for work, of course, yeah, we have to, I think it's like, it's a very dif difficult, like, you know, steps you have to take. Like, we have to maybe, like, let, uh, the companies know that you know uh, hiring in a diversity kind of concern is a very good thing for them, and also we, uh, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of actually there's a lot of women in data science. I don't think like it's also like it's still an imbalance, but I don't think it's as imbalanced as the as you know just maybe a software developer. So, but a lot of them choose to use R but not Python. I think um, it's showing that you know we can maybe encourage more, more women to try to use Python at their work because um, like uh, if, for example in London I believe that there's like people who are working of course like there's not that imbalance but um, maybe we could also encourage um, you know we, we could always start at the very beginning because it's the pipeline maybe we could start thinking about how to encourage young girls to be aspire to take like a STEM object or we, going into like a tech industry. So I think having a conference that uh, maybe we, you could also pro promote it to um, having some, you know, outreaching to schools, to young people. I think that's also very helpful that, 
you know, for, organize, uh, for conference organizers and people who are involved in the conference could do. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Chuck.